I've got an idea. Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Well, in case you missed our last video, at the end of this week, we're gonna be bringing six new pigs onto the homestead. Three that we're gonna be raising for meat this year, and then two sows and a boar that we're gonna have as permanent residents for breeding. Now, all of the pigs that we're bringing are a new breed of pig, or a fairly new breed of pig, called Idaho Pasture Pigs. They're not quite as big as a traditional uh, butcher hog, uh, but they're not as small as the Cooney Coonies or American Guinea hogs. They're kind of an in-between size and I think they're going to be perfect for our homestead. We have all three pens pretty much ready to go get these pigs and bring them home. There are a few things we need to tie up and one of them are the shelters they're going to be using for the grow out pigs and for the boar. And Kevin had an idea. Maybe we could repurpose our old meat chicken tractors. These days we're trying hard to not go anywhere, not go to the store. My original plan was to build something brand new for the pigs, but I'm just about out of lumber and I don't want to use up everything that I have. So I think I have a great idea how we could repurpose these old chicken tractors uh, to make houses for the pigs at least for the next few months until things calm down and we can get back to town to get more supplies. So today, we're going to start kind of taking these apart and making some modifications and get them ready for the pigs. So these chicken tractors are in pretty rough shape. In fact, we were just going to take them apart and reuse all the parts uh, until I had this idea. So uh, we're going to start by first of all taking the door off of each end because the pigs aren't going to need a door on their houses. Get rid of that. Okay. Next thing that we're going to do is take off the tarp. Uh, obviously, this tarp isn't doing much good anymore. This thing's actually been sitting out in our pasture for almost two years. So we're going to just take this off, and then we'll take the other door off. That tarp has definitely seen better days. All right, let's get this other door off. Basically, we're trying to get this down to just, you know, the frame of everything here. Because the wood needs quite a bit of work. Well, Sometimes plans don't work out exactly the way you'd planned. When I started to take these apart now that I have the tarp off and those doors off and I can really see this thing, it's in a lot worse shape than I thought it was. So we're actually going to take this back out of the shop. I still have a plan and I still think that this is going to work, uh, but we need to get it out of the shop because the way we need to work on it isn't going to work inside of here. So we're going to move it back outside. Luckily, it's not raining today. One of the only days that it's not going to be raining for at least the next several days again. We've had so much rain. Uh, but we're going to try to get this done so that we can get these into the pig pens.
All right, so on with plan B. We're gonna flip this thing on its side. Now we're actually going to take off this front and back board and let the cattle panel lay flat on the ground. <laughs> well, <laughs> that happened faster than I thought it would. Like I said, this wood is in pretty bad shape, so that's why we're moving on with this plan instead of what we originally were going to do. All right, now that we have that all taken apart, you can see that it's just kind of laying flat on the ground. Now I've noticed that a lot of my uh, fence staples that I had in here originally holding the, holding the cattle panel to the wood are coming a little bit loose. So first thing I'm gonna do is just tap all of those back in, and then I'm just gonna add some reinforcement to make sure that they can't pull out. And then we'll be ready to take this over to the pig pen. I've got the cattle panel secured back to the boards here. I put these back on just so I could try to lift it up with the tractor and carry it down to the bore pan. So hopefully it works. Well, we're over in the bore pen. We got the, the cattle panel over here. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna drive in some T-posts and then we'll see if my plan is going to work. All right, so now we have those three T-posts in. We're gonna bring the cattle panel over and lay it up against there, and we're gonna try to make a hoop out of it. So you're too far that way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use these ratchet straps to just kind of hold it in this shape. Then we're going to put another row of T-posts over on this side, four feet from those, so it'll be four feet wide. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to undo this ratchet strap so that this comes out to four feet. Perfect, so four feet there, and we're going to do the same thing down on the other end. The reason we did it this way is because our, bo our boards here on the bottom are warped. So we can't just put the T-posts in a straight line. Now we can mark and we'll know exactly where they need to go. Now we're gonna move the entire thing out of the way. Which direction are we gonna go? Back? back.
All right, <sighs> let's put it back into place. Now we'll just take the ratchet straps back off and it should spring out right up against the T-posts. I think that's gonna be great. Obviously it's not finished yet. A few more things that we need to do. So what we're going to do now is we've got this heavy duty vinyl. This is actually an old billboard. And we're gonna cut this to the size that we need for the top of the shelter. And then we're gonna attach it with uh, some, some, some outdoor wood screws and some washers. We're gonna make this good and tight over the top of the shelter. Now the hardest part is gonna be figuring out whether or not we want the pigs to have smiley faces on the inside or on the outside of their shelter. I think this used to be a billboard for a dentist's office. I think we'll put those on the inside so airplanes flying over don't think we're too weird. <laughs> and the pigs can look up when they're taking a nap and see people smiling at them. So now our plan is we're going to fold this over. We made this a little bit longer than we needed. We're going to fold it three times so that it's extra strong. And then we're going to use, you know, screws and washers to, to attach it to the two by four. Well, we've got that tarp on and I'm actually really happy with the way that this looks. It went on uh, pretty nice and tight. But we had one great idea, actually Sarah had a great idea while we were putting this on, is that this is very similar to when we put the plastic on the greenhouse. And on the greenhouse, we actually used this special wind strapping and we actually had some left over. So we're gonna use that on here too. We're gonna put three of them across and that will really hold that plastic onto the frame. And that way the wind won't be able to blow it off at all. So that's what we're gonna do next. I don't think we need to do this like we did on the greenhouse where I need to tie it to like a ball and throw it over to Sarah. I think we can probably just toss it from here. Well, there it is, it's all finished. We got the wind straps put on. I actually attached both sides to the T-post so that you can't push it uh, either either way. And I really think that this is gonna be a great house. Now again, this pen is gonna be just for our boar pig. He's gonna be in here all by himself. And I think this is gonna be a great size house for him. But remember also that this hopefully is just temporary. Uh, we're only doing this right now this way because we don't wanna go to town. Uh, we're trying to stay as much on the homestead as we can. And we're definitely not going to any stores right now till we see what this coronavirus stuff is all about. We're just going to stay here, and I think this is a great solution. Just before we bring him home, we'll put a bunch of straw in there so he's a nice place to kind of bed down, but this is going to be great. We're hoping to get his entire pen finished today. There's two more things that we need to do. We need to hook up his automatic waterer, and we need to put up the electric wire around the fence. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is hook up the automatic watering system. Now this is going to be a gravity fed system because we don't have water running back here. I think if I do four blocks, that'll be tall enough. It doesn't need a lot of pressure. All right, now we're gonna use this blue barrel. This one I had cut down at one point when we had the automatic watering system for the rabbits. So it's not a full barrel, but because the boar is going to be by himself, I'll give him this one and that should be fine. And basically we're just going to use a hose. I took a piece of hose and made it with 
two uh, female ends on here and we're going to run it from the barrel into here and inside of here is an automatic drinking cup that I'll show you in a second. All right, that's all hooked up. Not a whole lot to it. Again, it's just the bucket, a hose, down to the watering cup inside of here. Now, we've never used this type of watering cup before, but where we're getting the pigs from, this is what they use, and I was totally blown away when I saw it because it kept everything so much drier for the pigs, and so I'm excited to start using these. They basically walk up, hit the little button with their nose, it lets some water out, they can drink it, and they walk away. Nice and, nice and clean, which is super important with the pigs. All right, we still want to try to get the electric wire done in here today, and we're getting low on daylight, so we need to hurry up. We're going to try to get this done yet. Now we're going to start hooking up the electric fence. Basically, we're going to use just standard uh, T-post insulators. These are two-inch insulators, so the fence, the piece of wire will actually be two inches inside of the hog panels that we have here. And this will prevent the boar from trying to root around the edges of the pen, which is a big deal. Now he's already trained on electric fence, so I'm not going to go overboard making this very fancy. I'm not going to put any tensioners and things like that to make it really tight. We're just going to put it up, pull it tight by hand, and it'll be fine. Uh, again, because he's already trained, it doesn't have to be as good as it did if we were putting something up to train him on. He should already respect it, and ideally, he'll never even touch this fence. So we're going to get busy putting these up. Well, the boar pen is ready for us to bring Charlie, that's the boar's name, home to our homestead. We've got the electric fence run inside of here now. We're just doing the one strand. That's all it's going to take to keep him away from the fence. We've got the solar energizer all hooked up. Everything is working great. And he's got that new shelter that is going to be perfect for him when we bring him home. We are so excited to bring pigs onto the homestead again. And what a great new adventure for us and our family to be breeding some pigs. Now we still have to finish the pen for the feeder pigs and just a little bit of work for the sows. We need to bring their feeding station over. Uh, so we have a little bit of work to do yet. Hopefully there is one single day the rest of this week without any rain so we can get those done. It's been a rainy season for us. We're actually so happy with the way that this uh, shelter turned out that we're actually gonna do the same thing over in the feeder pig pen out of the other chicken tractor that we have left over. So we'll be doing that sometime very soon. You guys, I hope you're enjoying following us along as we are entering this new adventure with breeding pigs. Soon you will see them here on the homestead and can enjoy them uh, along with us. So you guys, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, make sure that you subscribe. And the best way that you can help us here is to share our videos with people who are like-minded and who may enjoy what we're doing here. So until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.